Hi friends! Welcome back to Road Just Traveled, where budget travel doesn't have to suck. As a traveler, I have spent years figuring out how to travel cheaply while still having a blast, and every Sunday I am passing that knowledge on to you, so be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss anything. Today we are talking about visiting Yellowstone National Park in the spring of 2021. I'm going to quickly preface this by saying I do not have a crystal ball. I don't know what the future entails. This was filmed in December 2020, but hopefully we'll be getting some leeway on a vaccine. It's looking good and um, it'll be safer to travel then whether we have a vaccine or whether cases go down. So this is kind of assuming that happens and it's OK to travel in the spring of 2021. Here's hoping. So spring is a gorgeous time to visit Yellowstone, but the weather can change on a dime. So that's why I've broken this video up into months. We have March, April, May, as things are drastically different in March as they are in April. Also, these are all estimates given our current pandemic situation, as well as their weather, which can be touch and go. Before you book anything, you're gonna wanna make sure you check out the National Park site, as well as Google, looking up kind of how the conditions are, stuff like that, but this will give you a general overview. So for example, if I say something opens in mid-April, it might open a little bit earlier or maybe a little bit later than that, depending on the weather. You're also gonna to wanna to stay tuned till the end of this video as I'm rattling off a bunch of tips for how to make the most of your trip to Yellowstone. All right, let's get right into it. March in Yellowstone is a sleepy winter wonderland. There are fewer crowds as it's pretty chilly, and so it's gonna be less busy than, let's say, April or May. And by cold, I mean something like a high of low 40s and a low of like 15 to 20 degrees. Also, when I'm talking about temperatures in this video, I'm referring to the weather that is at Mammoth Hot Springs, which is not the highest elevation. So places that are higher elevation are gonna be even colder than that. A big advantage of visiting Yellowstone in March is that at that time, because of the cold, a lot of animals are leaving the mountains and heading into the valleys, which tend to be a little bit warmer. So if you're in the right areas, there are some great wildlife that you can experience. A major disadvantage to visiting in March is that pretty much all the roads except one are closed for the season. The only road open at this time is the road from the north entrance to the northeast entrance. It's also a very transitional period for the park as the winter activities start to come to an end and the park gets ready for the summer. Usually at this time, there's only two hotels open, which is the Mammoth Hot Springs and the Old Faithful Snow Lodge. However, this year is different as because of COVID, they're both closed at this time. So usually every hotel with those two are closed, but if you are, wanna stay near the park, you could get a place in West Yellowstone, Cody or Gardner. There's Airbnb options, there's cabins you can rent, stuff like that. So similar to how almost all the hotels closed down, pretty much all of the skiing and snowshoe rental places within the park close, but there are still places outside of the park that are renting. So if you really wanted to go snowshoeing in March and the places within the park are closed, you have some other options. Speaking of renting, there really isn't that much to do in the park in this time, aside from skiing and snowshoeing. So if you are a winter person and you wanna do that, there's some great backcountry that you can explore. But that's pretty much it. Usually when we're not in a pandemic, there are some great skiing and snowshoe tours where a tour guide will take you to all these cool places. I think most of those are closed this year for obvious reasons, but the National Park Service actually has a site with all the officially like certified or recommended skiing and snowshoe tour places. So you can definitely check that out. I'll put a link to it in the description. So remember when I said March is a great time to see wildlife? April is just the same. The bears start to come out of hibernation and the bisons actually start birthing in the Mar Valley. So if you're lucky, you might see a little baby bison stumbling around learning how to walk. Reminder to not go near the wildlife for the protection of you as well as the wildlife. As far as weather goes in Mammoth Hot Springs, you can expect a high of somewhere in the 50s and a low of somewhere in the 20s. So much like March, April is still pretty slow in Yellowstone as it's still a bit chilly, but the good news is that roads start to open up about mid-April. You'll see the roads from Mammoth to Old Faithful, Madison to West Entrance, and Norris to Canyon are open in mid-month. Much like March, don't expect too much to be open in the month, especially in the beginning. Some campgrounds and accommodations start to open up mid-April or so, so if you do want to go on the tail end of April, you might see more stuff open and available to you than earlier in the month. 
since the lower elevation areas are a little less snowy, there might be some trails available for you mid-month to do some hiking without needing snowshoes, but this is not the case in higher elevation areas, so be careful, depends on where you're going. Now, if you want to visit Yellowstone in the spring and you want lots of stuff to do and nice weather, then May is the time for you to go. Of course, you will see more crowds in May. You will probably see higher prices with accommodation, but that's for good reason. Elk start being born in the Mammoth Hot Springs area. In Lamar Valley, bisons are still calving there too. And there's gorgeous wildflowers that start to blossom. Spring has sprung, and with the spring comes all of the roads in the park being open by May. For detailed information on the current road statuses, you can visit nps.gov slash yell, or I'll put the direct link in the description. So while May is a great time to visit, there's one drawback that the weather is still a little unpredictable. It might be really sunny and beautiful out, it might be a little bit gloomy out, or it may even snow. So you really need to bring a lot of layers, make sure you always have a hat and gloves, and if it's sunny, bring sunscreen. I know it might be silly if it's snowing to wear sunscreen, but you can get sunburned during the snow, so be careful, pack the sunscreen. In terms of things to do, in the lower elevation parks, there is still a lot of hiking that you can do. Higher elevation tends to be snowy until June or so, and if you're into fishing, then fishing season starts on Memorial Day. So you know what to expect in these months. Here are some general tips on how you can make the most out of your trip. Book in advance. If you can't, or you're looking for a last minute getaway, you're probably not gonna be able to find something within the park, as those tend to book up upwards of a year in advance. However, you still have some options outside of the park. Generally, the closer it gets to your vacation date, the higher the accommodation prices are, and even flights generally for that matter. So you're gonna to wanna to book your trip as soon as you know that you wanna to go to Yellowstone. I know I've talked about this before, but if you don't know, you can actually download maps to your phone, which includes all the little things you pin. So if you wanna go on the Google Maps app, pin a bunch of stuff you wanna do, you can download that and then you have it, which is great if you don't have cell reception, which spoiler alert, there's very little to no cell reception in the park. Speaking of cell reception, for those that are a little more on the high maintenance side, you'll want to know that the accommodation within the park is a little rustic. I'm talking slow Wi-Fi, no TVs in the room, and no air conditioning. Luckily, the air conditioning is not really a problem in the spring, and you're in Yellowstone, you don't need to watch TV, but just something to note if you, if those things are important to you. If this is a complete deal breaker, there are plenty of options for you outside the park in terms of hotels, Airbnbs, stuff like that. Yellowstone is huge, and I'm talking overwhelmingly huge. So if you're visiting for a week, you might not be able to hit up all the stuff that you wanna hit up. So you're gonna to wanna to really prioritize your must do's and then your would be nices. What I usually do is I make a list of things that like I would be really upset if I didn't do. And then I make a list of like, if I have time, this would be nice. Then if you have an extra few hours within your schedule, you can squeeze in a little would be nice. So speaking of plotting out your time, I have said this before, but I highly recommend taking like 20 to 30% of your time on your vacation and leaving it blank. Don't make any plans, just in case something runs over and you think, oh, this is gonna take an hour or two and it takes four hours, you got a little wiggle room. And if you come across something while you're on your trip that you're like, oh my God, I would love to come back and check that out, then you have time for it. This will help you enjoy little spontaneous discoveries and not be so stressed out about time on your trip. If you wanna see some wildlife, your best bet is to go either at dusk or dawn because at sunrise and sunset is when a lot of the animals are active and looking for food. The two places that you'll likely see the most animals in are Lamar Valley and Hayden Valley. Considering how crowded this park can get, it's worth it to get up early to see the sights. For example, if you're gonna go see Old Faithful, Highly recommend you getting there by 8 or 9 a.m. at the latest, as around 10 a.m. it starts to really peak and everyone starts to get there to see the beautiful Old Faithful. If you've ever been to a big national park, then you know the lines to get food can get really, really crazy around lunchtime. And let's be honest, the restaurants and little cafeterias and stuff in these parks are never that good and they're pretty expensive. So rather than having to stop what you're doing and head to where the restaurants are, you can actually just bring your lunch and keep enjoying what's on your schedule. Like I said earlier, the weather can go from really sunny to gloomy and cold on a dime. So you're gonna wanna bring lots of layers, wear a hat, bring gloves, 
again, don't forget the sunscreen, bring lots of layers of shirts and coats and stuff like that, and just make sure you're prepared for anything. Keep in mind that when you're in Yellowstone, you are in bear country. They tend to stay away from really populated areas because they're a little afraid of humans, and they're a little timid, even though they seem really scary, but you're gonna wanna have a plan and make sure you know what to do should you encounter a bear. It's a good practice to bring bear spray, never go hiking alone, and if you do encounter a bear, you kind of wave your arms up and down, make a ton of noise, and you'll scare them away. They are naturally afraid of humans, so they likely won't attack you unless you pose a danger to them or their cubs. And speaking of their cubs, stay away from baby bears, because the mothers will kill you, because they want to protect that little baby. And I get why, just like we want to protect our babies. So I want to hear from you. How does Yellowstone sound to you in 2021? Would you potentially go in the spring? Would you wait till maybe the summer instead? Or are you not really thinking of traveling to a national park or anywhere entirely in 2021 just yet? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. If this was helpful to you, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed yet, then what are you doing? Subscribe, and I will see you next Sunday. Happy travels.